our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God.
How many is grateful on this morning? I said, how many is grateful on this morning? Like has been said, God's been good to me. You just don't know. You just don't know. Um, everybody's got a story. I don't know your story. You might have heard about my story, but you don't know my story. I might have heard about your story, but I don't know your story. I might have heard about his story, but I don't know his story. But I didn't come up here to stand and, and do all this um, just to do a few pastoral briefs um, to remind everyone of their tithes and offerings. Uh, we know where we can leave them at, at the rear or see one of the ushers. Um, do we have any visitors, first time visitors or second time visitors in the house? No, okay. Thank you so much for coming and joining with us. Um, we are elated that you are here at Cedar Grove this morning. Please, please, please come again. If you don't have anything else to do next Sunday, or if you got something else to do next Sunday, come see us. Um, in your travels this weekend, you know, this is the holiday weekend. Uh, please, please, please be careful. Um, I know there's a lot of motorcycles on the road. Please watch out for the motorcyclists as well. I was, I'm a former motorcyclist. My wife retired me probably about 15 years ago. But uh, people tend to, and I guess it's because they're smaller, you can't see them as well as you see a car. So give the motorcycles a few seconds before you decide to, to pull out, to make sure, and they come a lot faster than they look like they're coming. So please, 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 you be careful and be careful of the uh, cyclist. Uh, Pastor Ross will be speaking or preaching at Oak Ridge on the 3rd, June the 3rd at 7 p.m. That's this Friday night. This Friday night, along with the praise team and congregation. Do I need to say that last part again? Y'all let me know if I need to say the last part again. With the praise team and what? Congregation. So don't meet us there, beat us there. And that is a for a pre-pastoral anniversary at Oak Ridge. He will be preaching there. Is anybody ready to hear the word? Is anybody excited about the word? And most importantly, is anybody excited about Jesus? Amen, amen. Well, I ain't the only one in the house. So our uh, preacher for today, the Reverend Antoine Mapp, he's no stranger here. He's been here before. And we've been to Oak Ridge, and I didn't know he played until we were at Oak Ridge a few weeks ago. Played pretty good, too. So, um, and he's been preaching. He's gave me a, a brief bio, uh, preaching since 12 years old. So I'm pretty sure he's an old soul. Even though he's only in his 20s, he's probably an old soul. But we thank God for him this morning. He's a minister at Elk Ridge. He is a proud graduate of North Carolina A&T University of Greensboro. Thank you, proud. He's a member of Lewis Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. So with no further ado, we give you the Reverend Antoine Mapp. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Do me a favor and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord is good. 
that neighbor didn't get excited enough. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord is good. The reason I know he's good and the reason I praise him, I praise God for everything that he blocked. I praise God for everything that he did not allow to happen. I heard the son say God blocked it and he didn't let it be so. Is there anybody in here that's grateful that God stopped some stuff? It should have happened. It could have happened. It would have happened. But because of the grace of God, we are still here today. I thank God for his blood. I thank God that he kept me. Look at your neighbor and say, God kept me. I'm alive today because the Lord kept me. I can sing today because the Lord kept me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all, hey, I said, all he done for me, uh, he put running in my feet, clapping in my hands, shouting in my voice, and I got to tell him, thank you for being so good. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for opening doors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I had 10,000 tongues, that wouldn't be enough. I thank you. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that praise is comely for the upright. And when it says upright, it means that you're living and it means that you're saved. Is there anybody in here that's glad that the Lord saved you? Is there anybody in here that's glad that the Lord changed you? Is there anybody in here that's glad that the Lord has made you? Somebody shout, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a praise in my heart because the Lord has done something for me that nobody else could do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know when it'll be my last time. So I got to get it in when I can. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Deacon said, you don't know my story. All the things that I've been through. You will never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out. All you need to know is that my worship is for real. I suffered for this. I went through for this. And not only did I go through it, but God brought me out of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, glory. Oh, glory. Woo. Somebody said it don't take all of that. You wasn't there when I was in my darkest hour. And if I could praise him in the dark, now that I'm in the light, I'm going to show you how good God has been to me. Somebody bright. Somebody magnify him. Yeah.
Thank you, Jesus. Y'all just have to forgive me. Before I was a preacher, I was a praiser. Hallelujah. And I got so much to give God praise for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You may be seated if you can. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're just one praise away from your breakthrough. You're just one praise away for that thing you've been praying for. You just one praise away from your miracle. Church shout, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We praise the name of Jesus. Hey God. Oh. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy of the praise. Mm. Glory to God. I understand it now. I've been feeling burdened all weekend. But when I got here, hallelujah, I feel in my spirit that there are some things that are in your life that's getting ready to break. Every burden is getting ready to break. The breaker is here. Who is the breaker? Jesus Christ. And whatever you need, him to break off of you he's come to break it today hallelujah we thank you Jesus glory to God we honor the spirit of the Lord that is in this place thank God for the Reverend CJ Ross the shepherd of this house hallelujah we honor God for his man servant we thank God for my pastor in his absence, the Reverend Christopher D. Stackhouse Sr. Thank God for every deacon, every trustee, for the praise team, this wonderful host of musicians. Glory to God. Last but truly not least, I want to thank God for my granny. Granny came with, to be with me today. Thank you, Jesus. She keep me in check. And uh, she don't mind a little bit of shouting. But I can hear her, Antoine, you got asthma now. Yeah. She's like, you better calm down. You, you know you got asthma. I'm like, yes, ma'am. 20 minutes later, I stop. Glory to God. But God has been good to me. I'm not here for a long time, but I am here for a good time. Thank you, Jesus. I won't prolong the time. Uh, give me three hours. Thou be out your way. Don't take me serious. I'm going to be. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. See the grove. It's a blessing to be here again. 
I enjoy myself every time I come here. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. There are sweet, sweet expressions on each face. And it must be the spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 17, according to the King James Version of the Bible. I don't, I'm not sure if it's your custom to stand for the word of God. If it is, you may stand. If it's not, you may stay seated. A lot of preachers get mad when people don't stand. When they read the word of God, well, this is not my church. So I can't come in here telling nobody what to do. Amen, somebody. Luke chapter 17, put your finger on verse 19. You will find these words. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. God's word is always blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would stand up on the inside of me. Give me strength to declare your word. God, I pray that no one sees flesh, but that they see your spirit. Not by my might, nor by my own power. But it is of the spirit of the Lord that I can stand here and proclaim that Jesus is the Lord and Savior. God, we thank you now that you are exalted. That the devil is defeated. And that we have the victory. It is in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. I want to preach for a couple of minutes from the subject, My condition is not my conclusion. My condition is not my conclusion. Brothers and sisters, I love to start my sermons off by a little... Um, memory of the past. I love how we celebrate different events in our lives as black people. One thing you will find at a black cookout, you see red cups, big old grills, burnt hot dogs, put a little barbecue sauce on it, Put it in the barn. You'll see uh, some homemade potato salad. you see some that somebody docked it up from Walmart. <laughs> then you'll see what I like to call the communion table of the family reunion. That's the table where everyone gathers together to enjoy a couple of rounds of spades. Tonk. All of those games. I don't know how to play them. So I was at the table where they play Uno. Glory to God. We would gather around the table with excitement and expectation. Everyone is excited and confident that the card dealer is going to deal them a good hand of cards. We begin to strategize and target the people that we want to knock out of the game first. But beloved, my brothers and sisters, all of that excitement goes down the drain when you're dealt a bad hand of cards. All of that excitement goes down the drain once you realize that you are the target and they want you out of the game. And at that point, we realize that we are suffering and going through a tough condition. My brothers and sisters, just like some of the people around the card table, the enemy, the devil, is out here making strategies and plotting our downfall. He is trying to see how to knock us out of the game. 
He wants to knock us out of the will of God. There are times in our lives where the cards in our hands are just not suitable for us to win. And the devil knows that we have to endure trials and suffering. So what he does, he tries to capitalize upon our sufferings. He tries to capitalize on our conditions. They say that if you give the devil two inches, he'll take a whole foot. And my brothers and my sisters, condition, they are circumstances, they are situations, our conditions uh, can be our background, our environment, a way of life, a way of living. Your condition can be a tainted atmosphere that you choose to live in. Your condition can be a disorder, a sickness, a disease, or a complaint. Our conditions are allowed by God and as much as the devil tries to take advantage and capitalize on our conditions, he'll never have the last say. I heard a song that says, who has the final say? And they repeat, Jehovah has the final say. I come to tell somebody this morning that your condition is not your conclusion. Where you are right now is not where you will always be. Who you are right now, that's not who you will be after you experience the changing power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And those conditions are placed in our life to give God glory. So whenever you come up against a storm, after you cry and after you throw your pity party, you say, God, you get the glory. After they deny you, you say, God, you get the glory. Because if I can't get it right now, at the appointed time, it will be mine. Because my condition is not my conclusion. My delay is not my denial. And even when the devil says no, Jesus will still say yes. Somebody say, my condition is not my conclusion. Luke's account of the gospel is special because Luke narrows in on the outcasts and the mistreated. He focuses in on poor people, on widows, on lepers, people who are sinners, Samaritans, women and sick people. That's who Luke narrows in in his gospel. That sinner thing, the something just dropped in my spirit. Because one thing with a lot of church people, we capitalize on the sins of our brothers and sisters. We're not supposed to capitalize on their sin, but we're supposed to restore them in a spirit of meekness. A lot of times in the Bible, the church would not know about the sin unless they've been snooping in their business. And that's why God won't give some of y'all the spirit, the spirit of discernment. He can't trust you with it. Because if you pick up somebody's sin in the spirit, you're going to go gossip about it. But what you're really supposed to do is pray them through. You ought to connect with some people that can't just pray to God, but they can pray you through your trial. They can pray you out of your sin. Luke was a physician and a Gentile. He was not one of the 12 disciples. However, he walked close with um, the apostle Paul. Luke writes about the life and the work of Jesus Christ. And Luke is, Jesus is on his last journey to Jerusalem before uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. And on this way, he passes through Samaria and Galilee. And that brings us to the place in Luke chapter 17 that we're going to focus on today. Jesus, of course, 
is a Jew. The Samaritans and the Jews got a peculiar relationship with each other. And any time a Jew was traveling, they made it their business to go the long route that causes them not to pass through Samaria. The Jews looked down upon the Samaritans. So they tried their best to uh, 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 not come into contact with them as much as they could. But however, Jesus is passing through Samaria on his way to Jerusalem, coming from Galilee so that he must observe the Passover and that he must be offered up, crucified, that he must die, rise again for our salvation. But he passes by a peculiar group of young people. He passes by a peculiar group of outcasts. These lepers had two things going against them already. Number one, they were Samaritans. One was a Samaritan. Number two, they were all lepers. And I want you to understand that just because your sin or your condition is uh, different than someone else's don't make you higher or lower. We are all in the same boat. We are all just trying to make heaven our home. Can I get a witness in here? We are all trying to work out our soul salvation with fear and with trembling. So just because you're a Jew and you're a Samaritan, it does not mean anything. If you both have leprosy, you're in the same boat. If both of us are sin sick, we're in the same boat. And we both need Jesus. Jesus is passing through Samaria, comes in contact with the lepers, 10 of them. One was a Samaritan. The other nine were Jews. They stood afar off. They stood from a distance. And they lifted up their voice and cried, Master, have mercy on us. See, that's one thing that we love to cry out when we hear of bad news or when we're coming up uh, against a dilemma. Uh, it's always, if it's one thing, it's always another. There's always something going on and we cry, Lord, have mercy. And what happens is when they cried, Lord, have mercy, it did not matter what condition, hallelujah, they were facing. It did not matter who they were. It did not matter how many degrees that they had. The only thing that matters is that the Lord heard them. Somebody say, the Lord hears me. Psalms 18 and 6 says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. And cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him even into his ears. The Samaritan man knew of Jesus. But he did not have a relationship with Jesus. And there are people who are not saved, who are not sanctified, who are not into the church setting. However, they still know how to call on the name of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we try to be uh, so smart and we look for self-help books. We go to counseling. There's nothing wrong with that. But we forget one step, and that is to call on the name of Jesus Christ and to cry out and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Those of us who are saved, we better learn how to call on the name of Jesus. We better learn how to pull on the name of Jesus until you get a response. I heard some of the young people say, put some pressure in your prayer life. You got to apply pressure when you crying out to Jesus. What does applying pressure mean? That means you mean business. And you not playing about what it is that you're doing. 
so even if you wake everybody up in the house praying and crying out to the Lord, you still continue to cry out until you feel your breakthrough. We have to learn how to cry out to the Lord with desperation and anticipation. I'm not talking about a regular cry with tears flowing and you have to blow your nose, but I'm talking about the type of cry you're calling on the name of Jesus. You're shouting. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. When you cry out to the Lord, if you really want him to hear you, if you really want to get his attention, you have to do something that you're not used to doing. You have to pray in a way that you're not used to praying. And sometimes we look for spectacular words to say to Jesus, but sometimes all you have to do is just get on your knees and say, hmm, can I get a witness in here? But when you get to that point when you've cried as much as you can cry, You've prayed as much as you can pray. you fasted as much as you can fast. Just understand that God hears you. Somebody say, the Lord hears me. They cried, and Jesus heard them. Hallelujah. And this is what Jesus did. Jesus, he saw them. He said unto them, go show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And let me tell you, shout, God sees me. God sees me. God is omnipresent. And there is nothing that catches God by surprise. There are times in our lives where we are overwhelmed by our conditions. It feels as though God is not paying attention to us. Seems like God is not paying attention to what's going on in America. Seems like God is not paying attention to what's going on all, of the, all over the world. There are people uh, facing sickness and infirmity and are having a hard time dealing with things on the inside that they have not told anybody. But I want to encourage someone that God sees you. God is looking at us both uh, internally and externally. God is looking beyond our faults. He's looking beyond the color of your skin. He's looking beyond your addiction. He's looking beyond your sexuality. He's looking beyond all of your proclivities. And he's seeing what you need from him. The Bible says in Proverbs 15 and 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on evil and the good. Do you mind if I... Go back to Mississippi, where I'm from, for a minute. Sitting on my great-grandmother's porch. She would bust out with the song all night and all day. His angels are watching over me. The angels see through the lens and the eyes of God. So everywhere you are, just know that God has a watch on you. The Bible says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. So when you're crying at night, when you're stressed out, when you're in your car and you're cussing, God sees you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody has come up to that one point in their life where your condition is so heavy so you can't say Jesus, you say another word. And if you say it's a few words, I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to tell you that God saw you right in that moment. That's why he showed up the way he showed up. Because he knew that you got to a point where you could not take 
anymore. And God said, wait a minute. My word says I won't put more on you than you can bear. But instead, even when you cuss, even when you slip up and smoke, even when you slip up and drink, God sees you. And because he sees you, he got to step in right on time and save you from yourself. He'll save you from your condition. He'll save you from your sickness. He'll save you from your addiction. Just know that God hears you and God sees you. And he's getting ready to bring you out. And not only is he going to bring you out, but he's going to bring you out all right. Look at your neighbor and say, my condition is not my conclusion. Somebody clap your hands and shout, thank you, Lord. Clap your hands and shout, hallelujah. I got to leave you now. But here in the Bible, as they went to show themselves to the priests, to, it was a ceremonial thing. Because when you had leprosy, there was different phases to being cleansed. There was different uh, variations of leprosy, just like the different variations of COVID. So you had to go through certain processes. Hallelujah. I don't have time to get into that. But Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priests. They didn't ask Jesus any questions. Give me E flat. Mm. They didn't ask Jesus any questions. They didn't say, Lord, you see that they'll kick us out if they can't see any signs of our healing. All they knew to do was be obedient to the voice of the Lord. And they began to walk to show themselves to the priests. Sometimes when your condition gets heavy, you got to keep on walking. Sometimes when your condition gets heavy, you got to keep on singing. You got to keep on praising. You got to keep on preaching. You got to keep on working. Sooner or later, God's going to reverse it. Sooner or later, God's going to flip it. Sooner or later, God's going to switch it. Sooner or later, he's going to turn it around. They went to show themselves to the priest. The Bible says that as they went, they were healed. As they went, their condition it fell off as they went they received their deliverance as they went they were no longer known for having leprosy but now they're known for being the nine that god healed but i got news for you the nine lepers they still did what the Lord told them to do. But the one had a revelation. The one with the most conditions. He caught on to something that the others didn't. He realized he didn't have to go to the priest because he had an experience with the chief high priest somebody shout hallelujah he turned back to say thank you he turned back to give god glory he turned back and said lord you didn't have to but i'm glad you did somebody shout yeah he went back he fell down on his knees and he told god thank you and the lord said were there not ten? Well, the other nine. And he said, Lord, I'm not worried about nobody else. I have to come do this for myself. I come to tell you, when you're giving God praise, 
Don't worry about what people say about you. Don't worry about what people think about you. All you need to do is praise God for your miracle. Praise God for your deliverance. Praise God for your salvation. Shout yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard the Bible said many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord, the Lord, He will, He will deliver you from them all. Your condition is not your conclusion. You won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that uh, concerning you uh, sooner or later, sooner or later, sooner or later. God's gonna flip it. Uh, sooner or later, God's gonna switch it. Sooner or later, God is gonna turn around. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's going to flip it. He's going to switch it and turn it around. Ah, shucks. That one, the right neighbor, he's going to flip it. He's going to switch it and turn it around. Shout it yeah. out. Shout it yeah. out. Shout it yeah. out. If you believe that God will work things out, shout it yeah. out. If you know uh, that he's a bridge uh, over troubled water, shout it yeah. out. If you believe uh, he'll pay you up, uh, shout it yeah. out. If you know uh, he'll make a way uh, out of nowhere, uh, shout it yeah. out. Shout it yeah. out. Shout it yeah. out. I'm grateful that he will. He will. He will. He will. Keep me uh, and even uh, if it's not my time for my condition to change, he'll give me grace to deal with it. He'll give me strength uh, to keep on walking. Why? Because he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me uh, that I'm his own. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a bridge uh, over troubled water. The Lord won't let me down. The Lord won't let me drown. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're about to move. I'm moving from being sick. Uh, to being healed, uh, I'm moving uh, from being down uh, to being up. Uh, uh, I'm moving uh, to another level. I'm going uh, higher in the spirit. Uh, my condition uh, qualified me uh, to go higher, higher. I'm going up. Uh, I'm going up. Uh, I'm going up uh, to another level. Uh, I'm going up, uh, and when you see me, uh, just know uh, that I'm walking in the favor of God. I'm walking in the grace of God. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. If you believe uh, that you're moving, uh, shout glory. My condition uh, is not my end. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, the thoughts uh, that I think towards you uh, thoughts of peace uh, and not of evil uh, to give you uh, uh, an expected end uh, death uh, is not the end uh, but healing uh, is the end uh, deliverance uh, is the end uh, favor uh, is the end uh, prosperity uh, is the end uh, I got to quit uh, but I don't know uh, how to stop uh, there's something uh, on the inside uh, that's telling me uh, to go ahead. Uh, there's something uh, on the inside uh, that's making me uh, go on. Uh, uh, I come to tell you, keep going on. Keep going on. Uh, keep on fighting. Yeah. 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 
when you come out, I heard somebody say, I said, I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I, I, I can't keep it up to myself. Whoa! It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Yeah! 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 My breakthrough is on the way. A move of God is on the way. Your help is on the way. Yeah! 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 You can praise Him because your condition won't keep you down. Praise Him! Praise Him! Praise Him! There's a miracle out in the aisle. You ought to praise Him. There's a miracle on this aisle. You ought to praise Him. There's a miracle at the altar. You ought to praise Him. God is here. God, He hears you. God, He sees you. God. You ought to step in the aisle. There's a miracle in this aisle. Step in the aisle. There's a miracle in this aisle. Your miracle is yours today. Today is the day to receive your miracle. Today is the day when you receive what God has promised you. I see you fasting. I hear you praying, I see you crying, I see you travailing, and today is the day where God is meeting your knees. Praise Him for your miracle. Praise Him for your breakthrough. Praise Him. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Yeah! 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 Shekho ma 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 ndaya Hey glory Hayada ba shanda Your condition He come ba sha Is not your conclusion Hallelujah Hallelujah Your condition is not your conclusion Yes, God, yes, God, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. How? Somebody ought to holler for her miracle. Hey, 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 it's yours today. It's yours today. It's yours today. There it is right there. Handa the Lobosha. Receive your strength. Receive your miracle. Receive your breakthrough. Shakoda la 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I can't help myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to touch him uh, because the Lord uh, is getting ready to download uh, some things in your spirit. Uh, the Lord, uh, he hears your cry. The Lord, uh, he hears your plea. Uh, and I come to tell you uh, that today uh, is the day uh, where salvation uh, comes to your house. Uh, you've been pulling uh, on the hem uh, of his garment. Uh, but holiness uh, is coming to you. Uh, healing is yours today. Huh? Receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody hold on. If you're not jealous, you better praise him. Because if it's in the atmosphere, it's yours too. How? Come on, Dio 
Shata. Hallo, la la bossia. There's an attack on young black men. But I just want to touch him. Because God is releasing his angels. It don't matter what you do. It don't matter where you go. God's going to be surrounding you. There's a fire on the inside of you. There's a calling on the inside of you. And God, he's going to use you. God has his hands on you. You may not do it like everybody else, but God's going to give you something special down on the inside. Somebody praise him. Shandalobo Sikanda Rabasa. Oh, praise him. Oh, my Shanda Rabasa. Glory to God. Receive your miracle. Receive your breakthrough. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hiya, Baba. Shake on Rabasa. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is on you. The Spirit of the Lord has been surrounding you. Hallelujah. Be not dismayed. You have not been sending up strange fire. But every prayer that you've been praying, God's been receiving it in the heavenly host. He's been receiving it in the holies of holies. Shout thank you. It's around the corner. God says this last go round you receive double for your trouble somebody shall go That's it, that's it. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Lift your hands and worship. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Lift it up, we give you. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. Lay your hands right there. There's a fire getting ready to hit your belly. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Shandalobosa. It's getting ready to hit your belly. There's a fire stirring up on the inside of you. Every gift that's on the inside of you, God's getting ready to make it come forth. And I want you to birth it out in the spirit realm. In your prayer life, you pray until you feel God shifting in your life. In your prayer life, you pray unto God, give you a song in your spirit. And you sing it out because what it's going to do when you come in here and open up your mouth, there's a, a sound of deliverance that's going to break out in this house. And captives will be set free because of your yes and your obedience to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
we give you all the glory. I just want to shake your hand. We give you all. You can make it. You can make it. God's giving you strength to make it through anything you come up against. Don't ever doubt God because he's always on your side. The hand of the Lord is on your life. And there is favor getting ready to hit your life because you said yes. And you said yes with a pure heart. God's going to honor your purity, your pure intentions, your pure motives. God's going to honor that. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. He's going to reward you for your purity. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord. Just bask in his presence. We about to get out of here. But while we are here, just worship the Lord. Tell him something sweet. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Quartet song, you are real, you are real, so real. You're realer than my problems, you are real, so real. You are real, you are real. So real, so real. Anybody know he's real? Real. Oh, so real. Y'all got it now. Let's lift it up. You are real. You're real in my soul, you are real, real, so real. Oh, you are real, you are real, so real, so real. Yes, you are Jesus, you are real, you are real. Oh, you are so real. 
lift it up together you are real you are real real in my soul so real you are real you are real so real let me hear you without the music say you are real so real Woo, this is what heaven sounds like you are real stay right there oh i'm about to go say lord i want to say thank you Lord, I want to say thank you. Sing, Lord, Lord, I want to say thank you. Go to the six, dude. For all you've done for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For all you've done for me, oh, sing, Lord, Lord, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you from your belly, Lord. I want to say thank you. Yes, sir. For all you done for me. For all Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there one today that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? What we feel today is a result of our relationship with Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, he's not a judgmental God. And he'll receive you just as you are. It's not the job of the preacher to change you. But it's God's job to change you. And when he changed you, he'll make you beautiful. He'll make you lovely. He'll make you wonderful. He'll make you love people. He'll make you forgive people. That's the Jesus I know. Don't wait till you become a certain age. Don't wait until you feel like you are right. Come right now. Jesus is waiting. Come right now. He's standing at the door and knocking at your heart. Come now. He's waiting on you. Today is your day. Today is your day. Perhaps you know him and you've been in a backslidden state. 
The Bible says that the Lord is married to the backslider. There is nothing that you can do that can make Jesus stop loving you. I know it feels like you in deep, deep, deep water. But there is no water that can drown Jesus. He can pick you up. Bring you out the miry clay. Clean you up. And place you on solid ground. Is there one today? If you're not a member of Seed of Grove, today is the day. Come on, praise God. Praise Lord. If this your daughter, if this your friend, if this your niece, you better glorify God. There's room at the altar for you. There's room at the altar for you. Jesus is waiting on you. Yes, he is. Sing, baby. Yes, sir. Well, I thank you. Stretch your hand towards this young lady. I want you to begin to intercede for her. Millennials, Generation Z, we battle with a lot of things. And when one of us can come to the altar for deliverance, or we can come back to Jesus even though we seem far away, that's a good thing. The Bible says that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
And right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we say thank you that you've given this young lady the boldness to walk down this altar and to give you another yes. God, we thank you right now for the humility that you've placed in her heart. We thank you right now that you come to fix every broken thing in her life. Thank you right now that you're molding her and shaping her after your will while she's waiting and yielded. Help her to be still, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I come against depression right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against oppression right now. The Bible says that there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus and who walk according to his will. So we break every spirit of condemnation in the name of Jesus. We break every spirit of doubt right now in the name of Jesus. We loose the healing power of God in her life. We loose the delivering power of God. We lose peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy that this world did not give. And joy that this world cannot take away. And Lord, we pray that from this day forward, that you keep her grounded and rooted. Rooted in your word. Rooted in your presence. Rooted in this church. Help her to surround herself around people that are calling on the name of the Lord with a pure heart. Surround her with people with pure motives. In Jesus' name. Baby, you're not so far away where God can't reach you. She's here for rededication. And God is here to restore her. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world. But you conform yourself to the will of God. You stick to your roots. Stick to what the Lord has taught you. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. There's room at the altar for more. We're about to go. I feel, I feel the spirit feel it lifting off of me it's time to go home I'm tired now I just enjoy the presence of the Lord is there more if there's somebody that you know call their name out in this atmosphere if somebody that you know need to be saved need to rededicate need to be delivered need to be healed just call their name out and God's going to do it. Hallelujah. I need somebody to save to come hug her. So, lady. Come hug her. Minister to her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all keep her close. Keep her up under your wings. If I didn't touch you today, if I didn't come to you, it's because God already did it. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place and He has touched everybody. There's nothing else. If our hearts and minds are clear, as we stay in this spirit of worship, I'm just going to pray that the Lord will release His protection over everybody. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. Take this anointing with you home. Take this with you on your jobs. Young people, I don't know what your plans are for this weekend. But you plead the blood of Jesus over your life. Don't go nowhere without asking for God's protection. And if you feel in your spirit that you should not go, don't go. 
But even if you ignore it, I pray that God will cover you anyway. Young people, stay close to the Lord. Even when you do wrong, ask God to forgive you. Ask God to fix you. You dust your shirt off and you keep moving on. In the name of Jesus. You can consider yourself dismissed. If you want to stay in this spirit of worship, stay right here. In Jesus' name. Thank you again. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ.